Hi everyone. I hope everyone is doing great. Uh, my name is Vikas Mehrotra. So uh, Vikas, I think we can get started. Sure. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Jatin, would you like to share your screen, or would you do you want me to share my screen? And so, yes, uh, I am starting uh, with okay. the presentation here. So, yes, uh, let me know once you have the screen. Yes, Jatin, we have the screen now. I can see your screen. Okay. So, uh, oh. I just wanted. To uh, briefly go about uh, why we built top five before we show you what it is. And uh, Vikas, this process started uh, about uh, five years back, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, something, like, yes, around that time. So, uh, Thanks, Sharon. Can you can you tell us uh, what was the original idea that we uh, you know, kicked off this? Oh, project? sure, yeah, oh. you know. Sure, thanks, Jatin. So, a lot, sometime back, uh, you know, I have a analyst uh, or engineering background, and uh, and uh, a few years back, we were doing some work, and then we realized that you know the one point three trillion dollar student debt, and we felt as if you know using mathematics and using optimization, we might be able to solve this problem. And so then we started working with colleges and universities in uh, building a tool which can really help them determine what is the right financial aid that they should provide to a student so that they're not either over awarding a student or under awarding a student because both are suboptimal if you over award a student you you're throwing money if you're under awarding you're compromising on their chances of success so that's how it all started but i always felt and we as a team always felt that it has to be a win-win partnership so we built this tool uh, called the financial aid optimization tool for universities and colleges. And then just before COVID hit, we started thinking we have to do something for students as well. And we had all this intelligence. We had all this knowledge about uh, the cost estimations and everything that goes inside. We said, OK, let's build a tool. And very soon we found out that uh, the the students do not get a right estimate, and that was part of the problem uh, in them not selecting the right college. So we started building top five with that intent that if I go shopping on Amazon for computers, I'm able to compare multiple colleges very quickly. Uh, and I see that results uh, uh, notes are coming. Thanks, Jeff. And so you can do that on Amazon. Why can't we do that for colleges and universities? We have the estimates, we have high level information, but it, there was no accuracy. So the last three years we have been working on this to build that accuracy. And there's so many, I mean, um, use cases of what we have done, which I'm sure Jatin and I will talk to you more about, but uh, that's how it all got started. That's a uh, wonderful story with us. So uh, yeah, uh, the idea here is that uh, if you are going to college and you're spending just about the second largest uh, expense after your house on your kids' college education or as counselors, uh, you should have a place where you can search for all the colleges in one place instead of having to go to each one of them, going through their NPC, each one has a, a different kind and get a different results and then put it on a spreadsheet. We thought we'll, you know, have it right there for you. So uh, just going over the agenda here. Uh, we are done with the introductions uh, of the top five tool. We'll take you through what uh, it is capable of. And then uh, there is an additional feature and uh, uh, it is in itself a very uh, advanced tool. It uses machine learning and uh, AI engines to read through your award letters. So that is what Virtual File Reader is, and we'll talk about that as well. So uh, moving on to the Q&A. Um, sorry, uh, the last uh, point would be the Q&A. So coming back, top five colleges walked through. So uh, I'm sure uh, all of you have gone to a college website, uh, you know, taking their NPCs 
trying to find out the numbers for your students and their families. And uh, that is what the top five tool is also. You basically enter your, uh, you know, simple information, your uh, citizenship, your state, your basic details in there, and your academic profile. And based on that, it just, you know, uh, works its magic and brings out the results for you. Uh, there's also a search page. So uh, there are various parameters that you can, you know, filter your search for a college. Uh, the primary one would be the uh, out of pocket cost. So a family says, I don't want to spend more than $15,000 uh, per year on my child's education, even if, you know, come what may. And that in itself is a difficult proposition because no college says that, okay, this is your out of pocket cost. They just, you know, uh, give you, this is your uh, cost of attendance, this is your merit, you get this much federal if you do, or this much state, and this would be your out of pocket cost. And then you come to your uh, subsidized loans, subsidized loans, your, you know, FSEOG and whatnot. So uh, we have those filters built in. Uh, you only want an X amount. You uh, only want to uh, go to a particular state. Uh, whether you qualify to be a, a in state in a particular college, sometimes what happens is that uh, we have uh, extended families members or uh, step parents living in a different state, and you qualify to be an in state for that state as well. So you can toggle this there, and we'll talk more about it. And then there is the results page. So uh, Vikas, you want me to sh uh, share the tool, or uh, would you like to? Uh, you know, I can. Um, if you open it up, I, I can definitely talk through it uh, as you point uh, through that. Uh, a very, you know, like Jatin said, uh, and I have a daughter who's in, uh, who's a junior now. Uh, she'll be starting, and that was another thing which we basically, uh, that was another reason uh, building this tool because parents or counselors oftentimes have to build, go to each and every college's NPC, pull that information, put that into an Excel file, and then on the comparisons. So, you know, many. Things are very important here in, in some say in some sense where when a parent approaches a counselor uh, and if you're not if you do not have a tool like this and uh, you know oftentimes the students are sent to a different financial planner and we see that ha happen very often. What happens is that there is discontinuity. There is divergence in the selection of the colleges, one from a parent or one, one from a counselor standpoint, one from an IC standpoint as well as from a financial planner. Uh, also, if this process is skipped, uh, and that is if no financial planning is done and the counselors ICs help their families with essays, with everything else, with a social fit, with a college uh, academic fit, with a cultural fit and financial fit is ignored, it does often come back and bites uh, the next year. Right, so it's very important. We have designed this as a tool which is very simple to use uh, and it's very, very powerful. Thinking of this tool before we get into the tool as we go and take you through the tool, um, uh, I often like to say that if uh, a family comes to you and tells you that, you know, I do not want to spend over $25,000 annually. I'm only interested in these seven or eight states. I have this criteria. I have this criteria. Can you find me all the colleges? Uh, can you shortlist the colleges for me? Although it is a simple ask, it will take so long for any one of us to do that. With this tool, literally you can run that list, shortlist that uh, request, uh, build, a, build a shortlist for that request in seconds. So as you can see on the screen here, uh, you know it starts with a simple survey. You can fill in your name, phone number, right? Marital status, uh, gender, uh, citizenship, because it is useful for us uh, to know if you are a domestic or an international student. Uh, we are also building an international for your international students, as an example, or if some of you are already working with internationals, this this can this tool can be used for that as well. And we can talk about it a little bit later. 
Today we are going to focus on the domestic part. Uh, the state of residence uh, L, uh, helps us understand where what the residency is. EFC, affected family contribution, right? Um, uh, if the family knows their EFC, you can plug that in right now here. If you do not, uh, as Jatin is showing, you can click on it and there's a proper calculator. And the, this tool in itself is very handy. So anytime you're working with your families, you can take them through this tool and determine what their EFC is. Now, oftentimes we get the question, what about SAI? What about the changes in the FAFSA? We are already on top of that. We are releasing a SAI calculator. We are uh, in the coming weeks. We are there will be another webinar on that topic as well. So uh, feel free and please join. You learn a lot through that as well. But that tool, we are building that tool as well, and it's already in the process. So let's say uh, you know there's a needy situation. So student is needy, and let's say the student has a high merit. So then you can see both spectrums of merit and need. Here you can the database consists of all the high schools in the in the uh, country, right? So you can very quickly either type in and it will give you that option, or you can key in the name of the high school. Uh, what kind of uh, high school it is? When do you want to start this year or next year? Uh, what is the desired field of study? A uh, desired field of study helps us understand uh, the ROI part. Uh, if the student or if the student is looking for only top uh, 100 colleges in computer science or computer engineering, but with, where he's not going to spend more than $25,000 annually, but it helps us build those filters. Uh, GPA out of uh, uh, your high school unweighted GPA as an example. Uh, you know, let's say high merit, so we can go 3.8, 3.9. Um, ACT 34, 35, 35 is okay, and ethnicity. So very basic questions as you can see, um, and that's it. And then next, this is next page is where then the, all the magic happens. Um, on the left hand side, uh, you can choose the uh, we since we said uh, New Jersey as our state of residence, it's already selected. You can just select uh, as many states as you want. Um, let Jatin pick a handful of the states. So we have, uh, we don't have all the colleges. I don't we know how many map. students would go to Hawaii, oh, yeah. but uh, we have mapped uh, around uh, 1,200, 1,200 to 1,400 colleges in this database. And these are the most popular colleges in each one of these states. Now the next filter is let's say twenty-five thousand dollars. You don't want to spend more than twenty-five thousand dollars annually. And I'm saying twenty-five because state of California. You know, if you are in Minnesota, it's okay. Maybe some other states it's fifteen or ten. So uh, you are welcome to play around. Let's say fifteen. We are doing a needy student, so uh, I'm keeping the number a little low. Makes sense. Okay. And on the right hand side, just above where you have maximum out of pocket cost, where Jatin just put, there's a there's a filter there. So you can choose that $15,000 is for in-state at-home selections. So then it really budgeted student or it's OK. Student can be outstate on on campus. So outstate tuition fees are much higher, right? So you can you can determine what kind of filter you're using. So let's say outstate on campus. So it really reduces your list and then we'll go back and change that, right? Let's say four years and above four years, you also have expect acceptances, right? So the student is looking at the colleges where they are, uh, you know, top 10% or the acceptance yields are lower or higher um, or, you know, they're accessible. So you can select accordingly uh, as you're working with a family. Now we uh, at Virtual Analytics, we work with colleges in determining and, we, and optimizing and increasing their admission yield. So we do a lot of analytical work. Uh, so uh, and we are bringing all that intelligence into the toolkit. Enrollment type, let's say four years. So now we are not modeling uh, for uh, the college's acceptance. There are two things uh, which is on the top of a, any parent's mind. One is, will my student, will my kid get accepted at a university? Right early in the process. And second is, if they get accepted in the process, how much are they? What will be my out of pocket cost? Those are the two big main questions, right? 
we don't uh, again acceptances are very subjective and there are so many criteria. So we are not asking that part, but we are asking the second part, which is how much will be my out of pocket cost. So while I'm speaking, what Jatin is doing is adding colleges. So you can add up to 20 colleges here. So he's adding one by one those colleges uh, at random right now. And uh, <clears throat> so once you have quite yeah. a few colleges and if you go up and I can share with you, right? So let's say Amherst College, Massachusetts. All. So this, this is a college which is out of state for a student. But let's say one of the family members is in Massachusetts and Massachusetts would be in state. So just very quickly, uh, you know, as Jatin selects in state, all the colleges in Massachusetts will become in state. Right? So you, you, you don't have to run the query again. Automatically they become right. The second thing is uh, the state grant. So we are also building state calculators. Every state does it very, very differently. We've already built state calculators for many states like Minnesota, Wisconsin, New York, New Jersey, Ohio, etc. Right. So uh, so that is added advantage. You can also see what a student will receive from the state if that is the state of residency. Uh, student, uh, colleges may have their own uh, uh, institutional EFC calculations, not the FAFSA based. We do it centralized FAFSA based, but oftentimes the families know when they're targeting some of these uh, colleges like Stanford, they know what their EFC is and they can provide you with that information also, which goes under the CSS profile. So you can enter that again. Now this student is 2500, so needy student and also high merit student. Um, on the right hand side, you, you see the residency selection. You can choose if the student is going to be on campus, off campus or off campus with family because those everything makes a difference, right? So as so first part is when you uh, you create a shortlist for the student and once that shortlist is created, you can provide them with that information. And then when you sit down with them or the family, you can discuss, OK, what are the uh, scenarios there? Uh, you also oh. see uh, on the left hand side of in state is the award letter upload, but we'll come back to that later. But at a very high level, um, you can at a point can upload award letters. Yes. Uh, just wanted to uh, point out one small thing that uh, since we have the Minnesota state calculator built in, and that is why you don't see that option to provide or calculate that state grant. For uh, Massachusetts, we are still in the process, so you have that option. Thanks, Jeff. If you have it already in built, it's not there. So award letters are very important, right? So this is a process where that we think of this as two part process. One is the selection and we want students to make the right selection. That's one. Second is when you have made that selection, when you have your, that's why we say de to determine your top five colleges, choose wisely. The second part is when you have your award letters, we want them to know, compare apples, there should be an apples to apple comparison and award letters are also very tricky. We don't want ICs to then when they receive award letters from students to go in and in an Excel and enter all that data. It takes hours and hours, right? Uh, you would rather be helping the student. We, uh, from a technology standpoint, are able to extract information from those award letters, create that comparison so that you can talk and sit down with the family and talk about the out-of-pocket costs and all the key important uh, 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 portions of that particular thing, right? Also, this can be used for uh, appeals and reconsiderations of award letters, which on an average can also bring or help family by two, three, four thousand dollars annually, which is in itself is a big value for the families that you help. So as we go and save and proceed. So you can see some statistics right at the bottom, uh, which is the ROI piece, et cetera, right, which we are, which you would be able to see what is the salaries, et cetera. But Jatin, if you click on uh, approximate out of pocket cost. Which is. So very quickly you can see what is the approximate out of pocket cost and just showing some comparisons here, right? There's a toggle switch on the left hand side. Uh, let's say Amherst next to Amherst, you see a toggle switch. Right? You can then choose a different university and toggle in toggle out as an example. Right? Now this was a 
high merit and high need situation student. Therefore, for if you click on the merit and gift aid, you can see that information uh, coming in. So, uh, so the, there are three buckets here. First is the cost of attendance. Cost of attendance, we are showing some iPad information so that you can run some comparisons at 2021 data. We're also building, providing the data for 2023 so that you can have some comparisons. Okay, 2021, 2023. But so we have the cost of attendance. Then the merit and need gift aid is all the free money that stu your student is going to receive. Merit and gift aid. That's all the free money. They don't have to pay back. Which consists of federal aid if they are FL eligible or FSCOG. If they are not, they are not going to receive the state aid and all the institutional institutional is merit and need based. And that determines their out of pocket cost. Now, once you have that out of pocket cost, then if you subtract the subsidized and unsubsidized loans and then any private loans or any out of pocket cost, then it becomes your what is the net out of pocket, right? And that is basically then you uh, start paying the, the colleges on a either monthly or 10 times a year or whatever that desired frequency is. So over here, very quickly, uh, you know, you can, as you saw, you can create a short list. You can then sit down with the family, create your list, and then you can quickly compare what is your out of pocket cost. Uh, I see a uh, question from Jeff here. One second, let me pull that up here. Oh yes, Jeff, that's a, that's a great question. And that is why, I mean, that's very important. So what we do is we have used uh, AI technology, statistical convergence. We have used, uh, we have mapped the data for each one of these college NPCs. So when I say we have 1400 colleges, we go to each and every college's NPC. Uh, we have created uh, this uh, matrix and information where we are pulling the information or multiple nodes if the cost is changing if the efc is changing if the act is changing if the gpa is changing if there are more family members right we bring all that together and that's why we are able to that's how we are able to pull it uh, together that's why it is very very comparable and very fairly accurate and it reflects what you would see uh, when you go to a college npc don't take my word for it. There's so many counselors, ICs who are already using it, and they have done that test, and they they and they uh, and they can basically provide you with that information. But uh, it took us three years to build it because we had to perfect that uh, back end part. So great question, yes. So that's how we pull this information, and we are using publicly available data. We are extracting information from the award letters. We are bringing that in uh, here as well. Uh, because uh, you know you would be able to see that. Now, in this case, uh, Jatin pulled all the colleges who do not provide merit scholarship. So I'm going to go ask him go back previous uh, screen and pull a college uh, which is not the top tier, but maybe some other college which also provides a merit scholarship. So uh, maybe a Hamlin University. Okay, sure, yeah. And then if you want to uh, select colleges, if you go to the filter. OK, yeah, full uh, University of St. Thomas, maybe St. Paul. It was down below. Yes, and then yes, Jatin yes, is yes. able to, he can sort by cost. Jatin can also not only sort by cost, but he can also uh, sort alphabetically. Uh, so if you if you go to the next. Yeah. So let's if just University of St. Thomas, if you move it to the next page. So just like on hotels and uh, airlines where you see, OK, if you go a prior day or a next day, you know, the changes uh, we, are, we are trying to show that here as well. So merit and gift aid. So you see that green icon next to merit scholarship. Uh, so you can if he, if he clicks on that, you can see for University of St. Thomas, if his GPA was 4 or 3.3, what that numbers would be. And in between, we're just taking a wider range, but we can show narrower also. Uh, we don't go to the second decimal point, but we have mapped it up to the 10th decimal point. So 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, right? Not at 3.39 and 3.89. So 
So they, uh, so yeah, affinity um, grants are uh, that's a good question. Uh, affinity, if you go back and we can choose Hamblin or other universities, uh, pick up some cases of affinity. So affinity grant would be, let's say, for certain colleges, uh, uh, if you are, uh, you know, uh, if you have legacy, if you have siblings, right? Uh, uh, so example here, Hamden University. Uh, are your siblings, parents or grandparents, graduates of Hamden University give you additional financial aid? So if you can select that bachelor's degree or so questions to call, we have mapped those questions there as well. Uh, early deadlines, etc., which can result in additional funding. National scholarship. Yeah. So you can see the affinity grant here as well. Additional four thousand dollars for that particular student. That's the financial aid with that. Sure. Yeah, Sharon, thank you for joining and. Uh, and yes, we'll look forward to hearing from you. So uh, quickly, so, uh, uh, just okay. go ahead. Go ahead I was just coming to the comparison matrix, which is the non financial aspect of the tool, but uh, can be a deciding factor many a times that we have seen uh, in real life examples of students. Uh, now you have been accepted to two different uh, colleges and you want to be in a bigger town and that is why you are going to you know trying to go to a bigger town but you have also been accepted to a university which is in a smaller town but is very selective it has a very low acceptance rate and the out of pocket cost is almost comparable there's like a 600 dollar difference so which one should you choose? Ideally, you would want to be in a place which gives you exclusivity, which is a high in demand and thereby obviously uh, better, you know, school to go to. So that is why acceptance and graduation rates matter. And uh, we have some other numbers Thanks, uh, here as well. Uh, what would be the students earning more than a high school graduate? From this university, if you graduate, say McAllister, 83% students who graduate from McAllister earn more than someone who did not go to college at all. Uh, what would it be the net present value of my earnings after 40 years? So around the time that I hope to retire, how much would I be making? So at Today's value, you will be making over a million dollars if you go to Metallister. But if you go to Boston, you'll be making even more. So th these are numbers uh, which can be a deciding factor if the money is not that's the question. Because you want to add. Sure, yeah, so there are so many more things that we're doing. We're building of this again. Our intent is to help uh, families and students make the right choice. Um, so uh, and this tool is not for everybody. I mean, uh, we often hear that I have. My students are they're all millionaires. They don't care about the money, etc. Right? So there is definitely a threshold. This is for students who are looking. Uh, uh, you know, who are looking for the right. They want to know and there are some wealthy families as well. I mean, uh, even you know with a 300,000 EFC, they're looking for okay, which is the right college, which is the right financial fit, and financial fit is equally important as cultural and social and demographic and academic fit. So with this, I mean we can open up for Q and A. Happy to answer any questions that the attendees may have or anybody who has any feedback. So your mics are open if you want to uh, just uh, have a conversation, unmute yourself and we can talk.
Sure, Jamie, uh, we can definitely uh, work with you on that. I think uh, Jatin can provide some. Uh, yes, so we do have a open uh, board Vikas that uh, you can use and uh, we'll send it across also. Yeah. So After yeah, G, so we uh, we price it per student. Uh, it's an annual fee, so it's a one-time fee per student. So it's around sixty dollars per student per year. But uh, we do run some promotion specials at times, so uh, this would be a good time to try the uh, yeah, this tool is and and. Uh, when work, you are building your list for your juniors who are going to be seniors in fall, so. You can buy a set of student seats, yes. Are you aiming to sell to families directly or to uh, uh, co uh, college counseling programs within high schools and to IECs or to everyone? Yeah, we are thinking, uh, Steve, we are thinking through counselors because there are nuances to the tool that uh, I personally think that the families may not be well equipped to understand and, you know, take. So they need some help with the tool is basically what I'm trying to say. So we are we work with ICs. We're also reaching out to high school counselors uh, uh, and uh, high school uh, or districts, actually school districts uh, to again, again, working with the ICs and counselors. And then I'm new to this field, but I did attend IECA in Seattle. I believe you all were there. Um, I stopped yes, by your booth. Yes. Uh, this is Steve again. Um, and so my question is, I think there was another group there, College Financial Pro or something. Um, how, how, I'm sure you know who you're, you're not, not to say competitors, but who, other people who are creating offerings in this field. How would you, because I'm brand new and I don't know, how sure. do you differentiate your offering? Yeah, I mean, we we are just building what we think is a right. We haven't seen their product. I heard that they have something uh, similar. Uh, we no, are uh, building. Because, uh, I think the, what Steve is talking about is College Planner Pro, and that is a CRM tool for uh, counselors. It is not a financial planning. Steve, tool. is that what you were saying or? Um, I believe they have a, a plugin or an additional offering that's a college financial oh, co pro. college aid pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah college so, aid pro, college. college aid pro. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I think yeah, yeah, college uh, aid pro is there. So I think uh, I we have mapped it to a individual student level, and I know not sure how they are doing it. Uh, uh, you know, our but data is. Accuracy it is only merit-based uh, at uh, College Aid Pro, I believe, and uh, it is not a uh, student uh, specific to the you know uh, details that we are going through the affinity and this. Yeah, uh, we, we have built it bottoms up, mapping all those different unique data points. Uh, so, in fact, uh, we'll be making some presentations as well. I also know that uh, some of these. They just take a high level, uh, you know, uh, let's say 0.4 times this, and then, you know, of the need would be covered and they know from experience, et cetera. But it doesn't help. I mean, getting to the the, the point, they are very accurate is very important. Also, I'm not sure they do the award letter comparisons or they can, they have the technology where you can upload award letters and compare. Uh, well, uh, we do that as well. I uh, came we, across, uh, uh, Website which would uh, which says that they allow you to you know uh, compare award letters, but basically what you do is your award upload the award letter, wait for 24 to 48 hours, or I think they say up to 72 hours, and then you get uh, your report, which is basically someone going into the award letter, punching in the numbers and do the PDF and send it here across. And yes, so we are different. I mean, um, I don't know much about them. But it's always good. Uh, I think it's a uh, com heavy competition is always good. I also think that this is an area where uh, ICs need help. And uh, and financial fit is something they do not have the right sources. So I I personally feel that it's very important to have this. 
Great, thank you. Uh, so what we'll be doing is uh, we'll be sending out uh, open codes for a uh, you know trial for the tool uh, after the webinar, and uh, yeah, you can uh, play around with the tool. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yes, go ahead, Steve. Oh, yes, it's great. Sorry, one last thing. Yes, I'm interested as well. I'm just starting in my practice, and so I just have a couple of pro bono clients um, that I would I would explore this with. Uh, um, my daughter is starting college in August. I wonder, is, is there utility for students during years, you know, two, three, and four of college? Does it carry over in, in that way as not just a planning, but a like a real time useful tool during through the college, you know, process. See, this can be used to an extent. Uh, definitely, there are some uh, ex exceptions, exclusions, which we might have to think about. But uh, especially for transfer students, or if she has already committed to a particular college, uh, you could see year over year yes, a few things. We can definitely have a, another conversation around it. But yes, the idea here is that this can be used uh, for transfer students, for international students as well. Great, thank you. This was helpful today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.